Hi, I'm Richard Sanchez, and in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can use the EDL importer to check shot lengths from your visual effects database and quickly track changes. So in order to do that, we're going to need a few things. The first is a subcap list. So we're going to kick a subcap list out of the Avid because again, the subcap list is effectively going to be your visual effect name with the time code in and out. Now it's worth noting there's one limitation to this. Because there's no source time code to this, this will never track shot slips. But it's a really quick way to find out if a shot length has changed, if a shot's been omitted, or if a shot's new. The other thing is, on my last show, our internal visual effects team liked to get marker lists from me in order to do their own analytics. And that's fine, but that meant I had to be extra diligent to make sure if my editor ever trimmed out a marker that I was on top of that. So I intentionally removed a marker here to show you how this will automate tracking those. So I'm going to export a marker list. I'm gonna send that to the same location. I sent this and I'm just gonna add the name markers just so I know what it is. And there's one, one more piece of data that we need, but I'll show you I've provided that. This is a text export, and this is what would come out of your visual effects database. So this is the shot name, the shot status, and the shot length in frames. And this is what we're going to use to track changes. Now status isn't totally necessary, but I like to include status in case I export a shot that maybe shouldn't be checked. For example, if the shot has been omitted and it kind of snuck its way into my list, I know I'm not tracking shots that I've already flagged as omitted. I'm tracking shots that I'm flagging as active. That way, if the shot isn't in the list, it'll show up as omitted. So I'm going to close this and moving to FileMaker, we're going to import that subcap list. That's step one. And let's import that marker list. There we go. And this window pops up just so you can make sure everything is lining up. So user, visual effects, timecode, track, color, comment. And if you've ever looked at a marker list as that number at the end, usually it's one. That is actually a frame length. The reason for that is if you're exporting spanned markers, this will show up as however many frames your span marker is. So in most cases it's one. So I'm going to import that list. And you can see, again, it's 214 because I intentionally left one out. So if we go back, or rather, I'm going to go to Visual Effects Length Check. And this is where I'm going to import the report that we got from our database. So I'm going to hit Import, Sample Data, Database Import. And Visual Effects ID, that lines up. Visual Effects Status, that lines up. Length, that lines up. So. I'm going to hit OK. Now I did this on purpose. I included a shot in our incoming data that our database says is an active shot and it is not in our cut and it'll show up as omit. So you already have some method of tracking shots that have been omitted. There's a little option here called show visual effects flags under subcap importer and I'm going to turn that on. And you can see here BNT 1000 missing marker. So it compared this to the marker check and said, if you have this subcap, you should have a marker and you don't have a marker. So this is the first step that I usually take. Oh, let me go back here. Let me add that marker back. BNT 1000, you should be there. And just for the sake of consistency, I'll name it back to visual effects. So our marker is restored. Thank you, FileMaker. The next thing we have here is this is flagging a mismatch. So it's saying the database is expecting this to be 100 frames, but the real, based on the subcap, is saying that's 56. So something's wrong. You need to check this. That's great. That helps me. So I'm already seeing these red warnings. And of course, you can use this option here as well. For example, maybe I just want to see where are all of my missing markers? Okay, using this quick filter, it'll show me missing markers. Or if I wanna track all of my changes, show me all of my changes. 
There we go, I have one change. If I want to show all, let's show all. Now, that's great, but I need to export a report and start writing these up. So, you have a couple of options. I can go to Tools, and I can export a change list. And what's important about this is this tooltip will show this is going to export a text file. So, I'm going to hit that. And I'm going to export that here. And I'll show you what that looks like. You can see it's taken the date VFX subcap change list, and it's going to show you what it found. So it starts with an omit list. It's saying this shot, according to what you see, is an omit. So let's double check that. And then I have my change list here and for example if I want to get more specific you know this says it was 100 frames now it's 56 well now I can start my audit of the reel and I can say that was actually a 44 frame tail trim I like to do that for consistency and I'm starting this report in a really consistent manner I'm telling what the length used to be what it currently is and where the change is and this is something that I can hand off to my visual effects vendors in addition to my revised count sheets and get everyone up to date you can do a couple other pretty cool things here too for example I can show those again and I can export a change marker list so let's make these markers magenta so they really pop. I'm going to put these on track two. I'm going to call these VFX change. Let's put this on the first frame of the clip. I'm going to hit OK. Let's go back here. And I'm going to go to my marker list. I'm going to go to import markers. And you can see today's date subcap change marker list. I'm going to hit open and look at that. It's only one marker, but again, if this is a better way of helping you track changes according to what the database has seen, this is pretty handy. You can see it tells you what it was, what it currently is, and I can just check this. So yeah, that's 56 frames, just like the marker says. So that's a handy way of working. You can do couple other things here too. The one thing is some visual effects teams like to use EDLs to track changes. I worked on a one on one show where my visual effects team would ask me to export EDLs of the titles every week so that they could do their own internal changes. Now that works if you use traditional Avid titles, which is Avid titles made in Avid 2018 or older because those will actually show up in an EDL. A subcap will not. And even though a subcap is similar to an EDL, a subcap is not a true EDL. And so this allows you to take your subcaps and make a true EDL if you're working in a team that really needs to have a true EDL of your titles. But you want to work in subcaps like I do. So I'm going to go subcap EDL, and I'm going to call this file 32 subcap EDL. I'm going to kick this out to the same location where I've been kicking everything out. And file 32 subcap EDL. And when I open that in a text editor, this looks like every other EDL you've ever seen. Now it's worth noting I had to make an assumption because again, when you create title media in the Avid, that actually has source time code. Subcaps don't. So in your source time code in, every shot will start at 10 seconds and it will go for the length of the subcap and then you have your record time code. But if you need to have an EDL because some team is using an automated solution that demands an EDL, you now have a way of converting a subcap to a true EDL. That is how you use the EDL importer to check your cut for shot lengths and convert subcaps to EDLs. I'll see you in the next demonstration.